My name is Guang Yan, uh, so I'm the co-founder and CEO of Dynamica. Uh, so first of all, I want to uh, thanks everybody uh, coming here uh, for our first uh, symposium, uh, and also to our speakers this morning. Uh, so it's a really wonderful uh, presentations. Uh, so as a team member in Dynamica, uh, so I worked with many of the projects, uh, but uh, it's to me also first time to seeing uh, the conclusions, uh, results, out from those uh, research. Uh, so I'm glad, you know, Dynamica uh, can be a part of uh, your wonderful research. Um, so as a uh, uh, company based on universities, so um, we are uh, by the uh, researchers and for the researchers. And um, we want to further improve our service to all the researchers in the future. Uh, so in the last year, so we have been working hard, uh, working on our app, which is the front-facing tool for all the participants. Uh, so in the afternoon session, I'll start with um, our newly uh, developed features in Dynamica. Uh, and then later, we'll talk about uh, future development. Uh, I want to talk about a few major uh, new features. Uh, ecological momentary assessment, uh, user self-report, custom activity and trip types, uh, and last uh, is uh, episode wizard. So the last feature uh, is only previewed in the iOS variants. Uh, so in, uh, this morning, in many presentations, uh, you see uh, some screenshots, but those are from earlier variants. Some are very old variants, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, so in the following presentations, you will see some new uh, screenshots. So that's our latest version. Uh, if you downloaded the app uh, last few days, you know, we sent out uh, invitation emails. Uh, so you'll be able to see uh, those um, new screens. So you will see, you will notice, you know, that's quite different uh, from older ones. Uh, so first of all, uh, this feature, uh, ecological momentary assessment feature. I want to say uh, in our older version, uh, so all the surveys are based on uh, trip or activity uh, of the participants. So the surveys are related to the activity uh, or trip. We did have uh, <coughs> a feature called end of day. <coughs> it's kind of like the uh, EMA feature, but that's only uh, one time uh, a day at a fixed time. Uh, so in this new feature, uh, we want to make it more flexible. Um, so the, in the new feature, um, this EMA surveys are displayed uh, at the top of the screen. So you can see here, uh, in this example, we have this uh, 8.30 survey. Uh, at 8.30, uh, the phone will deliver deliver a notification to the users to remind users that this survey is available so we can uh, start working on it. Uh, a few things, uh, you know, each project can customize, uh, including you know, time of the day. Uh, you can have, say, 8.30 uh, survey, noon survey, or 3 p.m. survey, uh, any time. Uh, you can also customize day of the week, for example, Monday, Tuesday, uh, any, or work day, uh, weekend. Uh, we also have this uh, expired time. For example, in this example, the survey will be available at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, this survey will give the user three hours to complete. Uh, so you can change this uh, window. You can say you only give them 30 minutes, uh, or you know, a day, or even no expiration time. Uh, the survey itself um, is the same as the existing episode surveys. Uh, a few types uh, you can uh, ask. Single or multiple choice, a slider, or text input. So in this example, if the user clicked this button, so 8.30 survey, then uh, they can go to this uh, survey screen directly. So you can fill out survey, then submit. <clears throat> so next, uh, it's the user self-report feature. So this uh, feature itself it's kind of like a, a specialized EMA survey. Uh, but the difference is it's not time-based. It's user-initiated. So user can initiate it any time. 
and then they can submit the survey multiple times. Uh, so in the previous slide, those EMA surveys, you know, uh, can only, only be uh, submitted once. Uh, so we feel like uh, this is also a uh, very useful uh, feature. Uh, for example, you can uh, ask participants to uh, fill out a smoking urge, or after each meal, you know, they can report uh, how much they eat, uh, or um, emotions. Uh, in this morning, so many uh, research, you know, used the emotion um, uh, scores, but those are related to trip or activity. But using this feature, you know, you, user can uh, report emotions multiple times. So within each activity, you know, maybe two hours, you can, they can report multiple times if they feel a change in emotion. <clears throat> so next uh, feature uh, is the custom types. So as you know, so the Dynamica was initially developed uh, for the transportation applications. Then later we expand our uh, uh, area of uh, applications to medical and then to other field. Uh, so we have heard uh, uh, from uh, previous uh, researchers, they want to add uh, a type we didn't have in the, uh, in the original app. Uh, so we developed this feature. Uh, for example, <clears throat> uh, for the activity, you know, especially for medical uh, research, uh, we can have a hospital type. So if the participants go to hospital often, uh, then there are some surveys uh, related to hospital, you know, they can select this type. Uh, similarly, for trips, you know, we can add new uh, uh, trip modes. In this example, you know, added a scooter. Uh, or you can add a taxi or some newer uh, trip mode. Uh, so besides adding new types, so you can also remove types. So uh, these types are based on uh, previous li uh, literatures. Uh, so some may be not related to uh, your specific project. Uh, for example, maybe you don't need education, then we can remove it. So the new feature will be very uh, flexible. Uh, then the icons of each type can also be customized. So maybe for a uh, specific location, you know, for your project, uh, the participants will go to, you know, there is a logo or something you want to use, so we can uh, use that as an icon. <clears throat> uh, last is the episode wizard. So that, as I mentioned earlier, so this is only available uh, in the iOS uh, preview. So if you have a Android, uh, then you download it in the last few days, so you don't see this yet. <clears throat> so one uh, comment we have heard is, uh, especially for older populations, so they, they are not familiar with the uh, smartphone. Uh, so our existing uh, app, you know, it's not very intuitive, uh, so uh, some people struggle a little bit. So we want to uh, make this simpler. So uh, we came up with a wizard. So we want to uh, make it more intuitive and less time uh, spent on this, uh, uh, on this app. So the standard wizard uh, should be good for more than 90% of the use case. So here I have a video a screenshot just to show uh, the, how the user can confirm uh, activity and fill out survey. So I'll use this uh, activity as an example. So at this, uh, right now, so there's a question mark at lower uh, right corner. So that means this uh, activity has not been completed yet. So you can select the episode. You can select the uh, type. Then you can also update the name of the activity. Then you can confirm. So this will go to the survey screen. So you can fill out survey. So then once you submit, uh, that will return to the list. So now you see the question mark becomes a uh, check mark. So that means this uh, episode is done. 
So another thing I want to mention is uh, in our new uh, action center at the top of the screen, uh, it tells you how many episodes are not uh, completed yet. Uh, so those are marked by a question mark. So you can check your uh, episodes uh, if you see the question mark. So you can uh, click those then to uh, confirm the fill out surveys. So as I mentioned, so the standard wizard, standard process should be good for more than 90% use case, but uh, it's still possible. Um, there are some errors uh, in the app detected episode. Then user can use uh, the uh, more options tab to do uh, more advanced uh, adjustment of the trip or activities. So for activities, you can adjust the time or convert the activity to trip. Then for trip, you can also adjust time convert to activity. Then you can also insert an activity uh, within the trip. So for example, if you have a, a pick up and uh, uh, food, you know, you'd stay there for just uh, two minutes. So maybe the app considered it's a part of the trip. Then you can say, I want to convert this part to an activity. So I will use that as an example to show you uh, the new uh, process. So I will use this particular trip. So now you can select the more options that go give you these options. So for adding an activity, so you can use a slider to choose the location. Then you can add the stop. Then there'll be warning, say, do you want to uh, insert that? Uh, <clears throat> so for that particular trip, uh, so actually uh, I went from one location, then went home to pick up something, then go to another location. So then uh, the app uh, uh, split the trip into a trip, home activity, and trip So uh, in the bracket. So then for each of them, the new uh, episode, you can go ahead to uh, confirm and fill out the surveys. Um, so uh, those features, you know, are uh, many features were uh, requested or recommended by our previous collaborators. So, uh, you know, as a uh, team working for the community. So uh, we, we won't stop development for sure. So uh, in the future, you know, uh, we'll uh, develop more features. Uh, then the features uh, will be based on our uh, uh, collaborators' request. Uh, so in the next uh, session, uh, so Andy Becker will talk about the future development. Uh, then uh, I think as now as you have questions, I certainly can answer uh, questions about my presentation. Yeah, my question is how sensitive the uh, GPS would be in identifying different activities. Uh, I, I just uh, went to the university avenue uh, ramp to grab something in my car, and then I walked across the street to my office. Uh, after I came back, I noticed the activity is still in the alumna center. So that means the GPS did not identify my activities after my lunch. So, uh, yeah, how accurate would the GPS to identify those uh, activities nearby? Uh, so, uh, I would say in general, uh, if it's within 200 meters, so it's very difficult to to. Uh, to separate those activity locations. So first of all, so the, uh, you know, all the GPS uh, uh, devices, you know, have uh, accuracy. So uh, depending on the conditions, uh, you know, indoor, outdoor, or, you know, uh, uh, the quality of the GPS. So that could be, say, tens of meters. Uh, then on top of that, uh, so there are some uh, uncertainties about, uh, you know, whether the user is really moving to a different location or not. So in general, I would say, uh, you know, around 200 meters, that's a, you know, uh, what we can achieve, uh, you know, by the nearest uh, locations. 
Yeah, I, I think that the question is more like, say, you know, from one location to the next active location, you know, what's the minimum dif distance, you know, you can separate these two. Right? Yes, I'm wondering, for the EMA piece, is it always like pre, the time is pre-programmed in buckets, like where it's like the, the prompt comes to participants within a certain set of time, or are you able to send the prompts to the person in response to their location? Like if I was walking by or I went to a restaurant, you could send me a prompt uh, because for, you know I'm there. Uh, for the, uh, the EMA feature we have developed uh, is uh, only based on time. Uh, so that's another topic, yeah, uh, you know, location-based EMA survey. So is that feature you are talking about? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so the, we don't have that yet, but uh, uh, I think maybe in the next session, in the future development, uh, you know, uh, we can talk more. Yeah. Okay, and then can I ask one more question? I'm wondering about, at the very beginning, I think, of the day is when you're talking about participants' responses, then kind of informing the data collection, there was kind of the graphic. I, I guess I'm wondering if, like if you knew when someone responded about a behavior, like say they were eating and they responded at noon that they were eating, could that change like when you ask them the next day? Is it iterative at all or is it like it's always asked at the same time based on what you put in at the start? Uh, you mean the EMA feature or the self-report? The, the EMA feature, I guess. EMA feature, uh, EMA feature uh, so it's a, based on time or exact time. Okay. Yes, but uh, yeah, there could be a window, time window, for example, uh, between 11 and 12, you know, you can fill out this uh, time, uh, fill out the survey. Okay, but it doesn't like learn, it can't yet learn over time, like when mm. I'm usually doing something and then ask me about it. No, no, you're saying say, maybe they fill out survey at 12 and then whether the next day the, the app will prompt at 12. Yeah. Then. Yeah. That, okay, uh, we don't have that feature yet, but okay. it's an interesting idea. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, I think next uh, I will uh, pass it on to Andy. Okay, so um, for the remainder of this session, we're going to be talking about future development priorities. So Guang talked about what we have developed and what um, is available right now for your testing and for your studies. So really, the remainder of the session is going to be focused on um, getting your feedback in terms of what features do you need, what do you care about, um, what types of questions do you need to ask, and what can we do to ensure that Dynamica meets your research needs. So um, basically the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have two little mini sessions where we're going to talk about features and services. I'll provide an overview of them, and then um, what we'll try to do is kind of consolidate into groups of t tables, um, so then you can just have a discussion among yourselves to talk about the features, what you care about, um, kind of brainstorm, and then we'll bring it together for a large group discussion, so then we can just discuss as an entire group and such, and then um, Based on the numbers and number of tables, the Dynamica team members will be milling about to answer any questions um, that you might have as we go through. So we're going to have two discussion topics. Um, and then Julian is administering or passing out a form. This um, has basically the same information here, but we're just going to request that you indicate, you know, from one to five, how interested are you in a collection of features, just so then we can get some concrete numbers in terms of like how many people and how interested they are in a collection of features, so then we can prioritize the features in the proper way. In terms of our two discussion topics, we have features and services. When we talk about features, we specifically mean things related to data collection. So that means the Dynamica app, the study manager dashboard, and all of the different things that we can do to get you access to new types of data, better data, or more specifically target different types of data. And then in terms of services, so this is everything surrounding data collection. So this might be things like documentation, um, post data collection support, all of those types of things. So just keep that in mind as you're discussing. For this first group, we're going to be talking about features. So we're really just focused on what do we need to do to help you with data collection. So moving right into it in terms of data collection features, 
the first one, so these are, this is going to be a short list of features that we have considered um, implementing, but we want to know, is this helpful to you? Um, and it's, you know, the first two sessions have been great because I'm sure everyone has a bunch of ideas of what is everyone else doing and what, what can I do to improve data collection. So the first one that we've considered are new a new survey question type, so specifically image upload. So currently, as Guang had mentioned, we allow text, we allow single choice, multiple choice, and then we also allow sliders. But the question is, for your research, would it be helpful if you could have participants, whether through EMA or episode level, upload images? Maybe their built environment, you know, if they, um, as we had, you know, the instances where there might have been trash or something on the sidewalk, do you want them to be able to upload images? If, you know, they had a shopping trip, do you want them to upload a receipt? Those types of things. Um, we want to know, does your, would your research benefit from that type of feature and how important is it to you? Along a similar avenue, but slightly different, would be um, a new question type allowing for audio or voice upload. So, you know, it, particularly maybe with elderly population where using the smartphone might be difficult, potentially using um, audio uploads might be more beneficial for you. So, if that's a feature that you are particularly interested in, we would really love to know. Jumping into some more complicated features, um, the next one is adaptive survey designs. So this is related to customizing surveys for subpopulations within your study and modifying surveys throughout the study period. So this is kind of two different ideas in one, but really it's the idea that as your study progresses, as you collect data, are you able to modify the data that's being, col the data that's being collected? So for instance, we had instances where people were involved in a randomized control. Um, if we have surveys, maybe you want one subpopulation to receive certain types of surveys and then other populations to re uh, receive other types of surveys. Is that interesting to you where you want to be able to change who gets what type of questions? And likewise, maybe you have a beginning phase and an end phase where you say, you know, for the first two weeks people are going to have certain question types and then after two weeks of data collection, hit a button and then they're going to get the second phase. Maybe they get an intervention and then they get new um, survey questions. So do you care about having adaptive survey designs within the Dynamica app? The fourth one would be external data integration. So Jin Wu had presented on using the E4 sensor. This is a this was a custom project where we worked with him to integrate this data. You know, so it was really close integration with the Dynamica app. We've also done a little bit of exploration with other sensors like Fitbit. If you are doing research where you have this external data source, we want to know what type of external data are you collecting and you know, is, are there ways that we can make your life as a researcher easier and to really connect the two so that it's really just this seamless um, analysis of all the data together. Finally, context sensitive, sensitive intervention delivery. So this is, you know, the ability to interact with participants via the study manager dashboard. So. Recently, over the past two years, we've, with Dynamica, we allow you to enroll participants via a dashboard so that you don't have to worry about distributing phones and such. It's made data collection significantly easier and less time consuming. And the question is, is are you interested in being able to interact with the participant, participants in the app, maybe through the dashboard? So if you want to provide interventions, letting them know, you know, hey, we noticed that you haven't traveled recently, you haven't left the house in a couple days, then you need to send them an intervention of some sort. Or if they're not meeting your study requirements in terms of data collection, are you interested in letting them know through the app, hey, you need to go into the app and confirm your activities or trips or fill out your surveys. Those types of interventions, um, how important is that to you? Currently, you know, you really have to do it through email, so we want to know how important is this and what specific types of interventions would you be interested in um, implementing? I believe, yes, so that is, those are all of our features. So basically what we appreciate now at this point is if you were to fill out the survey, um, the first half of it related to um, how important these different features are for you, uh, then um, once you do that within your tables, maybe potentially consolidating some of the tables that are smaller, um, that have fewer people, and then just discussing, you know, what did you care about, what did the other people care about, what do you not care about, so then we can kind of figure out um, what matters for everyone. 
And then after that, we'll, we'll talk for about 15, 20 minutes, and then we can um, bring it to a large group and move on to the other topic. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna bring it back together for a quick large group discussion. Uh, then um, after after the large group discussion, we'll do another short discussion section so you guys can continue all of your conversations, whether it's related to the features or Dynamica services. Um, but before we um, before we jump into the actual services section of the discussion, is there any, um, are there any lingering questions or comments that we, um, that you would, anyone would like to discuss as a large group? Um, feel free to raise your hand if there was anything that you wanted discussed by everyone, but that's completely fine um, to just discuss in your small groups. We just wanted to provide the opportunity, so. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly talk about some Dynamica services so then you have some context about the second half of the survey, and then we'll just resume our discussion about, um, you can resume your discussion about the features or you can talk about the services as well, and then we'll um, wrap up the symposium. So in terms of services, again, this is related to everything outside of the actual data collection. So we just wanna know what can data Dynamica do to improve your research experience in terms of making your life easier as a researcher. So the first one that we would like to know more about is, you know, when you're applying for grants and when you're um, submitting an IRB application, do you find that um, you could use a little extra support from the Dynamica team, you know, providing maybe some specific language about how Dynamica functions, about, you know, our HIPAA policy and such? Um, we would just love to know, you know, is there more information related for grants and IRB that you would like to have? And if so, what, what type of information are you looking for from us? The second one would be enhanced support documentation. So we, you know, obviously this app, it's been developed for over 10 years, so it's, it's very complicated and there's a lot of nuances of it. So we wanna know, you know, do you need some extra support documentation related to the app, related to the data that's generated from the app? And then also, we do have some support documentation about the study manager dashboard, um, but these are just kind of some examples of, is, is there documentation that you really just, as researchers, would just be like, you know, it would have made my life a lot easier if we had this, and what can we, do, what can we provide for you so then you can be successful? Another one would be software packages. So um, obviously the Dynamica team, we have plenty of experience working with Dynamica data and how to analyze it. And we have some, um, a lot of experience with it. So the question is, is would, it, would it be helpful for you if we provided some software, whether it's you know in our package, to maybe make your job in terms of starting data analysis a little bit easier. How to maybe some functions in order to clean your data or how to create some data derivatives like things like daily summaries and those types of things. The fourth one would be data cleaning and custom data export services. So basically, currently on the dashboard when you run a Dynamica study, you download basically the um, purest form of the Dynamica data, what the app collected, uh, then we just let you analyze it and clean it the way you see fit. But, you know, if there's kind of a consensus in terms of this is what we want in terms of this is what everyone is doing in how they clean their data, we could provide that via the dashboard. So then you can just, you know, you could download the pure version or you could download the clean version just so then you can start data analysis that much quicker and that much sooner. So a fifth one would be, you know, an interactive dashboard for visualization and analysis. The study manager dashboard currently, for those who have used it, does a lot of, of neat and great things related to enrolling participants, evaluating the compliance metrics, and then allowing real-time um, looks at the data. And the question is, is, you know, maybe we can do some stuff to help you while you're doing data collection in terms of data visualization and analysis to help you understand the data as it's being collected. The another one, this is the second to last, would be data collection as a service. So a lot of us understand the pains and difficulties of recruiting participants and collecting data. Um, and 
you know, some of you might not have the time or the, you might not be willing to actually collect the Dynamica data, but you know this is what I want, want to study. And um, for a fee, Dynamica could potentially be the actual data collector so we could be in charge of recruitment of participants, collecting data, so then you just pay us, and then we provide you with data when it's ready to go. So this would be another potential service that we could offer. And then finally would be a Dynamica research portal providing access to example data and networking opportunities with other researchers. So then you can share what you're working on, discuss the recent advances that you've had in your research. Similar to how this is also a networking opportunity allowing you to collaborate and interact with fellow Dynamica researchers. So if that's another thing that you, know, you wanna find a way to easily stay in contact and keep up to date with what everyone's working on when using Dynamica, we'd love to hear about that. So, Again, just feel free to fill out um, your interest in all of these different features. And then, you know, if we missed a feature, or I'm sorry, services, if, you missed a, if we missed a feature or the service that you're really interested in, leave some comments and details at the bottom or on the back of the form so then we can know about it. And then the last thing I'll say is that, you know, if you, for some of these services and features, if you feel very strongly about it, we'd love to hear about it. Feel free to send us an email, and we'd be happy to meet with you to discuss these, um, whether Zoom or in person, to kind of figure out how we can satisfy your research needs. With that, we will um, go back to your group discussions, discussing the various features and services. So we'll discuss for... Um, probably about 15, 20 minutes again, and then we'll be wrapping up the symposium. Okay, thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Um, so we are, we are going to conclude this um, discussion session, so I just want to thank everyone for um, taking the time to provide your opinions and to discuss everything. On the forms, if you are willing, we would really appreciate if you could put your name and contact info um, in case you know we have any questions, we might reach out to you, maybe discuss some of the information in further detail. Uh, then, yeah, feel free. Um, we would love to hear from you if you have any specific comments or ideas in terms of what you are looking for out of Dynamica and the Dynamica app. With that, I'm going to come around and collect everyone's forms. Um, if you need a little extra time to fill out some more information, that's completely fine. Uh, then Yingling will come and conclude um, the symposium for us. So thank you. Well, thank you, Andy. Um, I would say that it has been truly a great day, right? <laughs> Thank you for staying here for the afternoon session. You know, it has been a long day, especially for our guests who traveled out of the town um, to Minneapolis to attend this. Thank you so much. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, um, certainly I think this symposium uh, came out of the idea of kind of we're trying to promote our technology, promote our business. Um, but I also wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, it is also our hope that uh, this symposium can help to build a scientific community uh, for understanding everyday life. Um, uh, so we actually have a, a higher and a more ambitious goal with this symposium. It's not just about you know, uh, promoting our product, our Dynamica um, app. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I think you all have seen that uh, uh, the seemingly mundane data on everyday life can lead to groundbreaking research, right? <laughs> um, so as a part of this community, I definitely see opportunities to increase our inference and also gain recognition for our work. Um, and uh, I wanted to share with you one very exciting thing um, that with the help of our speakers, we're actually going to work on an uh, um, edited book um, so each speaker is actually going to contribute a book chapter, um, and uh, uh, there will be a book coming out of the work being presented today. So I'm very excited, and so therefore stay tuned uh, for more updates. Um, so I, I want to just, uh, I guess before I um, say that, you know, uh, say about you know reaching out to the Dynamica team. I also wanted to share with you that uh, one of my uh, personal ambition uh, or you know when it comes to using Dynamica to study emotions is that uh, you know uh, 
uh, you know, I'm interested in, you know, in a society where we can have more shared emotions and shared feelings. Uh, and uh, if you know the uh, motto of the, uh, the motto of the Summer Olympics uh, in Tokyo, uh, the motto was uh, united by emotion. Um, the idea is that uh, when you, sports is something that generates shared emotions, and the shared emotions could unite people. Um, so if we can have a society that have more shared feelings, uh, shared emotions, uh, it's going to be a more united society, a more inclusive society. As, I guess that's kind of like one of the inspirations that I have uh, when it comes to study people's happiness and study people's emotions. And I, uh, if you don't know already, um, that one of my favorite uh, a band, um, a Coldplay, has an album called the Everyday Life. You should check it out. They have a song called the Everyday Life. In there, they say everybody cries, everybody uh, you know loves. So uh, I encourage you to check out if you haven't heard it before. Um, so finally, I you know I'm going to get this out. So please reach out to the Dynamica team members. Uh, if you are interested in using our technology in advancing your work. Um, and I want to just tell you that you have our commitment to support you every step of your research pro uh, process. Uh, as Guang mentioned, uh, um, that uh, we are a company by researcher for researchers. Um, so, uh, yeah, so you certainly have our commitment to help you and support you every step of your research process. Um, so thank you and uh, have a great weekend. <laughs>